I normally don't do intros like this. However, this video is going to have some very shocking content. And I just wanted to let you guys know to be prepared. Everything in this video is really, really, really sad to see. So, let's go ahead and watch. My name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Let's watch. Welcome to a special episode of Takedown with Chris Hansen. As you know, for the past several months, I've worked with Genesee County, Michigan Sheriff Chris Swanson and his ghost team investigating adults trying to meet children for sex, all a part of a major string of sting operations where these men are exposed, I get to interview them, and they are arrested and held accountable. But now we've come across a different sort of investigation, a predator who is operating in multiple states, one who targeted a 12-year-old girl in Flint, Michigan. It all starts with a visit to an emergency room after the girl had been sexually assaulted. This is 22-year-old Peter Pedgick. He was taken into custody by the Genesee County Sheriff's Office in early 2022 for allegedly sexually assaulting a 12-year-old girl he met online and groomed through Instagram. Over the course of the investigation, illicit secrets, devious actions, and disturbing revelations would come into focus, leaving everyone stunned. The crime started to unfold with a phone call to Sheriff Chris Swanson in Ghost. And I want to say, the content is very disturbing. Um, everything that happens in this video just has me completely shocked. This man... and. I try not to use the word evil a ton. I do use it, um, but this is probably one of the most evil men I've ever seen. Um, and I just want to let you know once again, like whatever you think he did, it's much worse. All right, let's continue. Ghost is the Genesee Human Oppression Strike Team, and they are one of the most successful child predator operations in the country. And how did you find out about this crime? Because of her family that saw the need and immediately took her to early hospital. And, you know, those professionals at hospitals, and especially the emergency rooms, triage nurses, trauma docs, it's easy when a story comes in to try to piecemeal. That's what they do. They, they, they're experts at assessment. When you hear a story and you start putting the pieces together, you realize, okay, this little girl has been sexually assaulted. The girl's parents bring her to the emergency room. Your department is notified. How do you then connect this horrifying crime to the predator? Her phone. Uh, phones are priceless pieces of evidence that link our whole world together. So we have a 24-7 ghost operator on call every day, 365. And they were dispatched to the hospital, immediately took the statement, grabbed the phone, Captain Nelson downloaded it, and boom, there's the conversation, there's the suspect, there's the, the contact that we need, and we start building the case, and we, we do it from, think about it as you're, you're kind of um, putting toothpaste back in the tube. You know, it's not always easy to do, but you're, you're, you gotta put it back to see where it started from, and that's what we do. What ghost investigators uncovered in the phone of the 12-year-old victim was troubling, disturbing, and every parent's nightmare. Why did Peter Padgett target this specific 12-year-old girl? He's attracted to young people. I want to say this about this video. And once again, like I said, I'm going to break down as much as I can. But, you know, I'm going to try my best to make sure you guys are understanding what's going on. But another thing that I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> the, what this man did, um, it, he's going to reveal, you know, just like the, the mindset of these individuals. I tell you guys that sometimes I know what some men are thinking um, when it comes to this kind of stuff, because me being a man myself, but I don't know fully what these guys are into. I don't know what sometimes I told you guys, I don't know, know what exactly that switch is. Sometimes, like we saw in another video, it's about power. Some people want power over these young children. Um but in this case, it, it took me to another place of um, really trying to uh, understand. Listen, I'm not. It's not that I, um, 
<clears throat> it's not that I really want to get into the minds of these guys, but if it's going to protect my children and help protect your children, I got to know what these men think. Because they do specific things to get these children to become friends with them. And so him, even this man just saying he's into little kids, he's going to mention stuff that's far more nuanced than that. But that is such a powerful statement because it's not just he's into kids. What he's really saying is this person is a sick individual who wants to take advantage of kids and he doesn't care what happens to them. I mean, this man truly does not care. Okay, I'm going to let it play for a little bit. It's out very innocent and it starts out just building a friendship. But he's already watching what she's posting at Instagram, so he knows the things that interest her, he knows the places she goes, the emotions she has, and he just plays on that. And then it quickly rolls into, we're gonna make this meet. And you know, if, if I say something to you and you don't turn me down, I just came a step closer. And then a step closer. But the ultimate goal is for him to facilitate a physical interaction. That physical interaction happened February 2022. Peter Pedgick flew from Florida to Detroit, Michigan, where surveillance footage captured him in the early morning hours. He convinced her that he would fly up and he would meet her at a parking lot, at a church parking lot, at midnight. He had already gone to a hotel, which is in the area off of Pearson 75, and rented the room. We knew what time that was. We had the surveillance videos. Then he came back, picked her up, took her back to the hotel. We have him walking down the hallway. She's a little tiny 12-year-old girl, 12-year-old. Gets her in the room, and he's with her for four hours. I'm sorry for that this video is going to be tough for me. I've already watched it. But just every time I see that part, like when I watch these, when I watch these predator shows, I never see the kid. It's always a decoy. It's always a decoy. So for the first time, and I think this first time in a predator show, I've actually seen the kid. It's one thing uh, seeing decoys and all that stuff. It's one thing even at my job, seeing the kids um, and just imagining um, it's painful, but to also, but to also watch a little girl, but to also watch a little girl go through such traumatic stuff, man, and you, you're going to hear why he, he, why she wanted to do these things, but for four hours, Four hours, this sick, disgusting individual took this little girl's innocent um, and destroyed her. And he didn't care. And it's, it's just hard to watch, to see that little girl who who did, probably didn't know what was going to exactly happen going into that situation. She just met this guy online. Um, got He found out what her interest was. And like he said, once she, once she didn't turn him down, he was all in. And it's just so scary to, to imagine that happening to my daughter. It's, it's just tough, man. But anyway, we got a, we got a, we got a ways to go. <clears throat> so let's continue. And uh, full sex, oral sex. Uh, he's videoing the whole thing. And he's teaching her told her what he wanted her to wear, how he wanted her to do her hair, grooming. And uh, he said, if you do this, I'm going to pay you with uh, crypto money for gaming. Crypto that, money that, for gaming. And that was... We're going to watch that whole part back. But he took this little girl in for crypto gaming money. 12-year-old. Gets her in the room, and he's with her for four hours. And uh, full sex, oral sex, uh, he's videoing the whole thing. And he's teaching her, told her what he wanted her to wear, how he wanted her to do her hair, grooming. And uh, he said, if you do this, I'm going to pay you with uh, crypto money for gaming. Crypto that, money that, for gaming. And that was her, that was her theme. 
So everybody's got a button. How did he groom this 12-year-old girl on Instagram? Well, many times the platforms are just the introduction and they take it offline because they know they're being monitored. So they'll go right to texting. And, uh, and that's what happened is he took her to a text conversation, which is obviously not monitored. And that's how the conversation continued. And, and he broke her down. And after that interaction of four hours, he was in Michigan for 48 hours. I can only account for four. That little girl had a psychological breakdown in her parents took her to the hospital and it was at that moment that the SANE nurses, which are sexual assault forensic nurses, recognized not only physiological trauma from a grown man to a 12 year old girl, but the emotional breakdown and that's what opened the door. The and this is what I talk about all the time is that these men, they, they don't care. They don't care. It is. It all. It all comes down to whatever they have to do, whatever they're trying to do. You saw that this sicko was even recording her. Um, so for him to be recording her, saving her the videos, teaching her, it's it's just disgusting. And they don't think about the child and what the child's gonna go through. All they ever think about is getting their rocks off. Or in in. It's. I'm sorry. I'm so lost for words today. I mean. I'm so shocked by this video. It leaves me a little bit speechless. It was just surprising for somebody like me uh, because I talk about this stuff all the time. But like I said, seeing the girl when I first watched this video really kind of messed me up a little bit. Kind of put me into a different perspective, um, into a different outlook that I normally give you guys um, because normally I, I, I don't get to see the kid and stuff like that. And I normally don't get this good of details. Normally the men, and normally it's decoys and stuff like that. And then I give you guys personal stories, but I've never had any kid come to me um, and like, and give me those kind of details of this is what happened and he made me do this and all that kind of stuff. I always know about it from an adult perspective, uh, but I never hear about too many graphic details. Um, and so this, this video has just got me uh, going in circles in my head of just, wow, wow, um, what these men really, really actually do. Um, and, it, and, it's, and he was there for 48 hours. He was willing to fly from Florida all the way to Michigan to do this with this one child, but he was there for 40 hours, 48 hours. So we have no idea what other children he also was able to get hooked on. And if that's, the, that's also the hard part is that these men, they will fly to different States. So they don't know, they don't know them. It used to be, Sometimes these things happen to kids and it still does. It happens to with men who are close to them, who know them. But with social media, you can literally just pick your target. Once you get that target, you fly out to that target. Whether they're there or not, it sounded like this man already had multiple children lined up to make videos of them. It's just. It's just crazy, man. It truly is crazy. Clock was ticking to catch this volatile child predator before he could claim another victim. So how did the Genesee County Sheriff's Office track Paget down? Detectives Walker and Kenimer documented their journey as they partnered with Florida law enforcement. All right, we just landed in uh, Fort Lauderdale. We've got a rental car. We're driving there in our hotel. So as we're looking at the pings, we're pinging the guy's phone all day long. Looks like he went south right now. Uh, he's down in like Hollywood. So he's not by his house. He's about an hour away from his house. So, you know, one of our fears right now is that he's out there um, and there's another victim perhaps, or he's out there uh, um, and not gonna come home. Hopefully uh, we'll make that work. We've been in contact with our FBI friends and um, if it comes down to it, they had a uh, a vehicle that can track his phone and uh, pinpoint his location and we'll be in contact with him. But uh, saying our prayers tonight that he'll return home and everything will go as planned as we set up. Things don't always go as planned though and the detectives fear Peter Pedrick might slip through their fingers. Looks like our suspect didn't uh, go home last night and stayed in Port Lauderdale. Um, so the hunt is on. Getting breakfast in the morning. Good morning. We're closing in on you. The ghost detectives hit the road in search of Pedrick, 
But with him not being home, arresting him might prove to be trickier than they thought. All right, we just talked to our contact. Um, they're on a standby now because he's an hour away to the south. Um, myself and Walker, we're gonna head down, try to lay eyes on him. Um, dealing with other states and other laws, we're, we're trying to figure out what they can do, if they can transport across county lines even. Uh, they have questions about that. Um, the problem we have is that the county that he was staying in or his home's in has set up for the extradition for us. And if he gets arrested in another county, um, everyone's extradition down here is different. Um, so we'll have to scramble to try to get uh, him sent back to Michigan. But we're going to go try to lay the eye on this guy and make sure we know where he's at. Local authority. I, I do want to explain that a little bit further in simpler terms because um, obviously I've been, I've been able to go through the whole video and get a much more, a, a better, deeper story with this. Uh, so what happened is... Um, he he went all the way back to Florida. He went back to um, Fort Lauderdale. They already set up for him to be arrested in a specific county. The problem is, is if he gets arrested in another county, they might not be able to get him expedited right back to Michigan because different counties will not even allow that. And so that is the problem that they're running into is that they don't, if they arrest him in a different county, then they may have a problem getting him back to Michigan where he committed the crimes. So that's just what they were trying to say. Just wanted to make that easier for you guys. He's get a ping on Pedgick's cell phone. Now the ghost team has to pinpoint his exact location. All right, so our local team has uh, tapped out for the day. Uh, they're on standby if this guy moves. Um, problem is he's in a two mile radius from his tower beams and he hasn't moved yet today. Um, reached out to the FBI. We're gonna try to see if we can get uh, directional towers and maybe do a little trigonometry and see if we can cross-reference where he might be at just limit it down a little bit. Um, we're an hour away right now so we're heading back to that area. If we got to we'll do a grid pattern through that search and we'll hit every neighborhood we can just to see if we can see his car. It's got a little Honda Civic, no front bumper so it should be kind of easy to see. Uh, one more day of this guy being out in the world is one day too long. So we're going to do whatever we can. Uh, one of our biggest fears is, is that he is reaching out to a new victim. And we're going to do everything we can to stop that. We're going to do everything we can to... to and <clears throat> at first when I heard that, what I heard that they said he would be going out for another victim. Um, sometimes, and I'm being honest here, that sounds so cliche. Like we're actually might be saving him for finding another kid. But not with this guy. After what he did to that little girl, and that we hear that, um, like you said, for 48 hours, he was in Michigan, so he must have had a different plan as well. Uh, for, for, I hate saying this kind of stuff because it makes me sound um, naive, um, but I'm just saying, based off the shows you normally watch, they normally catch predators before they do it, and they're catching them with decoys. Um, but I'm telling you, this story has made it to where I absolutely... Um, because sometimes it feels like these predators go after one kid at a time, right? These shows will show us like, oh, they're talking to one kid and they go after one kid. But in this case, man, you are seeing right now that this man doesn't go after one kid. He goes after multiple kids at a time so that he absolutely could be trying. Now, I'm sure this guy probably wouldn't do it in his own city um, because it would be more likely that people would find him. But at the same time, what I think they're thinking is that he may be getting prepared to go on another flight, prepared to go drive to another state. I think that's what they mean. Not necessarily that he's going to do something in that town, but he's going to go drive or fly somewhere else to get to his next victim. So they have to find him before he gets going on that. Because once he gets out of the city, it's going to be impossible to pretty much find him. On him down and get him in custody so we don't have that, that threat of him preying on any other vulnerable individuals. So that's what we are doing, and that's our main objective for tonight. Interesting thing about working for ghosts. This is Sergeant Rocker's first time ever seeing the ocean. Silver lining is everything. A short time later, detectives are hot on the trail and have him in their sights. All right, so we got our ping location, and we're heading to that location, and lo and behold, we find our guy driving. So we're now tailing him right now. There's our guy right there. 
following him nice and close. We'll see where he ends up going. Florida traffic, we're tailing a car. Don't know where he's going. We hope he's going back to the area where we have people waiting for him. Um, but the traffic here is thick and uh, we're dodging in and out of traffic. But he's not going home. The ghost detectives follow Pedgett to a bank parking lot now there's nowhere for him to run. All right, he's in the bank right now. Run the phone with 911. I'm gonna 1021 it. Um, and right now we have him in the PNC Bank on the corner of uh, University and Nova. U University and Nova. Um, we would definitely like to get a mark unit to get him pulled over. Yes. What color is the bank? It's, it's going to be a dark gray um, Honda Accord with a missing bumper. Human trafficking, uh, sexual CSC warrant. Um, his name is Pitar Pachek. Pedrick is cornered. The ghost detectives now have to carefully coordinate the arrest, keeping in mind they're in a public place with civilians all around. One of the units is going to call you now. Okay. Hello, this is Detective Walker. So, just want to say this. This part is going to um, actually explain more of why I mentioned earlier, why they mentioned earlier, the expedition person, exp expediting him back to Michigan. This is going to show why it was a problem to get him arrested in another county. This is going to explain that perfectly. It's in case you guys didn't understand me earlier. I'm not a cop. I don't work with the cops. I don't know the cops like that, so I don't know all the jargon that they talk about. So I'm not going to sit here and act like I do, but I hope I explained it the best I could. But if I didn't, this is going to explain it just as well. Hi. Hey, we have a couple guys in unmarked coming over to you. Where are you at? How do you guys want to grab this guy? Detectives Kenimer and Walker plan the arrest with local officers. Uh, well, preferably, I, you know, you guys could get them in custody for us. Preferably, I don't know how this works with you guys down here. But we would because we already have interview room arranged with uh -huh. Palm Beach County. If you guys could make an arrangement to meet up with them and transfer custody, where we could lo lodge him, because we have extradition and the interview uh, scheduled with Palm Beach County. Now that doesn't, we can't. He's probably gonna have to go to Broward if we grab him. Okay. Well, uh, that's Can we that's interview him? Are we gonna be able to interview him? Yeah, we can okay. take him back to RPD so you can interview him. This okay. Is active yeah. okay, beautiful. When backup arrives, it's go time. Peter Pedrick is just a few yards away inside the bank and doesn't have any idea what's about to go down. And I want to say this too, man. I'm sorry, getting right into it. But the reason this guy is going to look surprised, it doesn't really get explained why he looks surprised. But he's surprised because he did this deed in Michigan. He didn't do it down here in Florida. So he thinks he's getting arrested for something completely different. They carefully enter the bank and quickly spot Pedrick in an office just to the right of the front door. An officer approaches Pedgett and quickly pats him down and puts him in cuffs. Thankfully, Pedgett is apprehended without incident. With Peter Pedgett now in Genesee County Sheriff's Office custody, next, they take him to the station for questioning. Detective Kenimer is about to be sitting across from the man for whom he flew more than 1,300 miles to apprehend, and now he wants answers. What is going on? We are gonna get into all that, my friend. I'm a lieutenant for our Sheriff's Office, and when I tell you where I'm from, you'll know what this is about. Are you a monster? Well, here's the deal. I'm from Michigan. Do you know why you're here now? Pedrick shakes his head, no. I didn't come down here by accident, okay? And I believe I, you know why I'm here, right? I didn't just come from Michigan either. 
came from Flint. Okay. Does that ring a bell? Yes. Okay. It's now time for Detective Kenimer to reveal why he's there. Okay, so this is the part I'm going to tell you guys right now. Um, if, if you're not... Um, if you don't want to hear certain things, especially when it comes to kids, I would suggest um, maybe skipping past this part. Maybe skip about five minutes forward. Because the stuff that this man reveals is just shocking. It was shocking to me. Um, like I said, these Predator shows that you normally see um, don't go this far into detail at all. Um, they don't They don't give you the exact picture, man. They're, because they're decoys, right? So nothing actually happens. In this case, something actually happens. And so the more that gets revealed, the more it's probably going to turn your stomach. And if it doesn't turn your stomach, it's, it's going to break your heart. And I, I mean... I don't really know how else to put it, man. It is heartbreaking what this man is about to say. So really, honestly, if you got kids in the room, which I doubt it, um, but if you got even a young teenager in the room, I would suggest uh, letting them leave or watching this part by yourself first. And then you can easily um, bring the teenagers back in and explain to them um, about this sick, disgusting man. I'm just letting you know that before this gets going, because everything from this point forward in this um, commentary, as well as this um, show, um, is, is going to get pretty bad. So this, listen, Peter, I know that you know she was 12, right? I know that. That's not a question. But what I want to see is if you would be able to step up and help her now so she doesn't have to go through this anymore. Pedgick has acknowledged why he's in the interview room, but Detective Kenimer wants to get the how. So how did you meet her? Do you know her name? No, I, I genuinely, I think, I suspect, I suspect it was okay. based on her Instagram. Where'd you meet her through? Twitter. Twitter? He tells the detective where on Twitter he met a 12-year-old girl. There's like a community of people who age regress, as it's called. And one of the suggested posts that was brought up was one of her posts in her account. Okay, you gotta help an old dumb white guy out. Right, okay. What so is age regression? Age, age regression is uh, something, I'm not too familiar about it either, but um, it's, it's, a, it's a kink that a lot of people have you know, that they, they kind of get into like a space in their mind where they feel younger than they are. Age regression is a psychological defense mechanism for those looking to escape certain aspects of their life. It can also be a hobby, sexual fetish, or kink. So when you first started, it was like innocent, right? It, it was, you thought she was an adult. Yeah. And then, um, you didn't stay talking to her on Twitter? Um, no, she had me move to Instagram. Okay. Um, how long did those conversations go on for? On and off for about, like... All right, and what are these conversations? It was, I mean, it was mainly her. I mean, even I had, like, you know, doubts about the whole thing. And sure, you know, of course, I was kind of like, I, I didn't really... I didn't want to. I don't. I didn't think that I would be flying out. Um. When did it first talk about you this year? I, I don't remember when specifically. It was just more so like I had money, and I possibly may have made like a little quip, like oh, I could fly out two jobs type deal which I guess for her uh, kind of turned into like a huge possibility or right. opportunity for her um, and I, I, I didn't I, I really didn't think I was gonna right you were living into it you were living in the fantasy where I was living in a weird age regress kinky fantasy okay 
you know, just this fantasy of me pretending to, to say to myself that this is just a kink thing and that she can't actually be this young. I want y'all to really keep this part in mind. I mean, really keep this because uh, I'm going to I'm going to dive pretty deep into this part of the uh, um, interrogation. Um, once again, it's, uh, it's going to get worse from here. But I want y'all to remember him talking about this fantasy because y'all remember in another video I talked about um, the power thing. I mentioned that earlier in this video, too. Um, but this part is the part that started to get me thinking differently. Um, he's talking about a fantasy and he didn't think he would give into it and all this kind of stuff. However, I want to say this um, about fantasies. And um, I'm going to go ahead and say this now because I may forget to say it later. This is why I do warn people against uh, obviously i warn people against pornography but this is why i also warn people against um animated pornography better known as hentai um and and be in uh you know the stuff like lolicon uh, the reason i really dissuade people from even getting into that because i know some people think it's just a drawing it's just a cartoon however it is still a fantasy and those cartoons and those animes are really trying to represent childlike things um, the way that they act and the way they move into those things. And so when you get into that kind of stuff, you get into hentai, you get into um, lowly cons and you get into cartoon uh, pornography, it still brings that childlike form to it. Um, so when this, I heard this man talking about fantasy, that's where my mind originally went, um, because that's normally where the fantasy for some of these guys start is in the, the cartoon stuff. You know, they take stuff that was popular cartoons back then. And if you're not here for this kind of stuff, I, I apologize. I normally don't get this deep into this stuff. But today I told you, I told you when I made my community post that this was going to be a different kind of video. It's going to be pretty serious in this one. So there's people who um, watch stuff like the, they'll, they'll take pornified versions, uh, you know, the rule 34. They'll take stuff like Super Mario. Right. Let's take this like Spider-Man. Um They'll take stuff like, you know, uh, you know the uh, I think her name is Elsa, the girl who's saying, let it go. Um, they'll take that kind of stuff. They'll take all types of cartoons that they all grew up on. And they're little kids when they first start looking at it, 13, 14 years old. But as they get older, they start going into animation, right? They start looking at porno pornography version of all these other popular TV shows. And from there... Um, they, they, they start finding themselves always in that childlike manner. Not to say that anime is just for kids, but what I am to say is that anime is very sexual sometimes. And the way the women are portrayed in these um, animes is very childlike, very childlike. And there's even animes where there'll be like a nine year old girl, but she's actually, you know, 300 years old. But in the show, she's nine because she, she looks like a nine year old, but she happens to be whatever, you know. It, that's the, that's how they get around it. That's how they're allowed to do that kind of stuff. And the more you watch that kind of stuff, the more you begin to fantasize. And the more you fantasize, the more it becomes a part of you. And if you can't get therapy or some kind of help to get out of this, it's going to get worse, guys. I'm telling you, it's going to get worse. Um, however, after even saying all I just said, when it comes to the fantasy of what this man says, please keep it in mind Um that it goes much deeper for this man, but I did want to kind of give a overarching, how can this even begin? Instead, not how this can end, but more of a, how could a man even get into children? I'm not here to say it's a normal. I'm not here to say that. I'm here to say that's how evil pornography is. That's how evil porn addiction is. It makes a person into, when you give into your complete addiction, we see it with drugs too. How it, I obviously have a, um, a friend of mine back when I was younger who got very involved in drugs and ended up taking a man's life, taking a man's life and setting him, on, setting him on fire. And that's the reason I never did hard drugs because I saw what the drug addiction did to him and he was only 19 years old. Um, so addiction can turn you into this evil, evil, evil monster. It, but with porn, um, porn, it, it get, it's so insidious inside a person's mind. It's like they can never escape it. You know, I, I, I'll have more to say later, but just the last thing on this is when people who try to quit pornography and stop having the addiction, what gets people the most to relapse is the dreams. People dream about pornography. It's that deep into their soul. It's like they can't ever escape it. And it's so in their mind. 
It's such a fantasy in their mind. It affects how they have intimacy with their spouses. It affect it affects intimacy even with uh, people that they're you know like girlfriends and stuff like that. It just ruins a person from the inside out. I've heard so many stories. So anyway, let's watch or continue. Sorry. And I knew it was wrong. You know, I'll be upfront with you. I knew it was wrong. I, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and say to you that it wasn't just me all kinds of messed up in my head. Yeah. I, I, I just. Do you think you need some help? I genuinely need help. That's what I need. And I n never once Never once did I do this out of an intent to hurt or out of an attempt to 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 break or to make someone suffer or anything like that. And you know, because I I, uh, I because it's something I shouldn't have done. Um, should we roll into right apology letter and tell her that you didn't need her to hurt? Absolutely. I'm gonna help you step out. I'm gonna give you some time to think about what you want to write to her, and I'll come back in and check on you in just a little bit. One last thing I want to say while he's writing this, he said that he didn't want to make her suffer. He didn't mean to hurt and break her. Those are very, very particular words to say. Make her suffer intent to break her that's just when you think about it it'll make more sense as time goes on but just think about just think about why would you use those words it sounded like he did plan to do those things you know you can see here there's no remorse in his heart or anything it just it just sounds so matter of fact all right let's go back Pedrick is not too quick to put pen to paper. It looks like Pedrick is finally finding the words he wants to say to his victim. Now it's time for Detective Kenimer to get down to business and gather as many details as possible of the assault. The question though, is will Pedrick tell him the truth? Where did you pick her up at? At a church across from the street. Okay. And then you went to the hotel. Do you know what hotel that was? Um, yeah, I know what it is. I forgot the name. So it started with a B. So, uh, remember how I said we got to go over a couple things that are embarrassing? Yeah, of course. Did she perform oral sex on you? Yes. Did you perform oral sex on her? Yes. Did you try to put your penis inside of her? Did you film her giving you oral sex? Yes. How many times did you film that? How many videos up there are of this? Too short. Detective Kenner. So, so put the camera on me right quick. Just, just to, I could break this down a little bit. So for a man who was remorseful, a man he was supposed to he's making it she's making he's trying to make it seem like he did he cared i didn't mean to hurt her i didn't mean to make her suffer but yet you did oral sex with her you did oral sex on her you tried to um insert yourself into her and then you also filmed it does that sound like somebody who's done this one time let's be honest with ourselves what man for the very first time when a little girl films it and then feels bad about it. Doesn't tell nobody or anything. He wrote that letter, this fake letter, because the detective offered it to him. Um, but the detective was messing with him, obviously. It was just kind of a tactic. But he was just like, oh, yeah, I would totally write another because I, I didn't mean to. Yeah, you did. You absolutely did. Because why would you film it? He says two short ones. First of all, two short ones can mean anything. What he really meant is that he probably filmed a ton of it. A ton of it. A ton of it. He was in there for four hours. Did we not forget that? So he was in there for four hours. You think he made two short films? Absolutely not. 
Absolutely not. Because when I when we talked about uh, how bad pornography is, there'll be there'll be a time where they would take these young girls right and keep them for twelve hours, and within those twelve hours, they make. I believe one of the t- stories we had talked about was one girl. She was missing for 12 hours. They made 58 videos on that little girl. 58 videos. So just in a matter of four hours, he could have made multiple videos, especially because that's probably that's all he wanted to make. Okay. Because it was midnight when she went with him. So she could, he could have kept her from midnight to 8 a.m. But he kept her there for four hours. So I know he made more than two short ones. It's disgusting to even think about. I just hate looking at his face. There's very few men that I can, like, when I look at the face, it absolutely disgusts me. Like I said, when we watch all these other shows, there's no one with decoy, so it's, it's a little bit harder to attach myself to it. But this one, this man, when I see his face, it just makes me want to, just makes me want to puke. Because it's like, I, whatever you're saying about this whole, oh, well, I just kind of didn't really, really want to do these things that I just made two short videos. But you, you, my God, my God. Help me. He said he did oral sex on her. That makes my stomach flip. In my I'm trying to talk about this very matter of factly, but but this man did all this to this little girl. Now we have to think to ourselves and keep this in mind. Why would he make videos? Why on earth would he make videos to watch him himself? No, because why the reason I told you guys you may want to take your teenagers out of here because I don't want these teenagers and little kids knowing about these sites. Okay, but this man obviously found her on Twitter in a group for age regression. Okay, found her in there. So what other people do you think are going to be in there? Other men who look at this kind of stuff in women. And so he more than likely made those videos to sell them or exchange them to other men. That's what pornography is. It's a money game and an exchange thing. And then you have the uh, the the pornography. The pornography is terrible within itself. And then there's the dark places they don't want you to see, which you can just go find on your local website, Instagram X. And then obviously, if you just take those paths, you can go from there, right? And we call it the underbelly of society. But yeah, he was obviously taking these videos to give to other men. Make them pay for it or he'll exchange other things. These men are sick and disgusting. So when he mentioned that he made videos about it, to me, obviously they say that in the very beginning, but to hear him say it as well made me think there's no way on earth. He's remorseful. And another thing is when they talked about the 48 hours he was there, it makes me think that he made other videos. This man is (laughs) completely, has completely been... I don't know exactly the word I want to say. He has completely succumbed to his evil desires. And this is what happens when you give in to your addiction. He has completely been succumbed to it. And now he's out here doing the most devilish acts. And that's why I'm glad he's off the streets. ...got Pedrick's confession. But the other shoe is about to drop, making this case even bigger than anyone could have anticipated. Have you met with anyone else that's under here? There was, um... There were two others. Were they here or did you go to Washington State? Oh, uh, yes, one was in Washington State and the other one I drove to Oregon. Oh, okay. 16 and... 14, 15. Yeah, sex up there. Yeah. has just confessed to having sex with two other underage girls. Detective Kenimer is now face to face with an alleged serial child predator. So other than these three people that we've talked about, nobody, nobody else? Nobody else. Do you have anyone else you're talking to right now that is being I, you know, I will admit I do have like, kind of like almost like a network in the in Twitter on my on my Twitter. What did I just say? He has a network in Twitter. 
Now, this is obviously for me. I've already seen this video, but that was the first thing I had thought of, not about a network on Twitter. That part shocked me because I, I know Twitter is a terrible, awful place, especially after we know about the whole Gooner Club. Um, but it just always gets darker. X is probably going to be one of the darkest sites <laughs> it's outside of, you know, the obviously the ones that are blanking about it that we don't know about. Um, but yeah, that's what I was saying. That's how pornography always works. When men feel porn, especially of strangers they don't know, this is how it goes. It circulates. It circulates to another group of people who do this kind of stuff, man. This <laughs> and so, yeah, that, that's, that's just what I wanted to say. I, I, I knew he was going to say this, obviously. But when I first saw it, that's the first thing I thought as well. I just didn't think it'd be Twitter. Um, however, even though there are mentions of me going places, I haven't thought about committing to them at all. Anything else that we haven't talked about? Honestly, I'm so... I, I, my brain is all over the place right now. I'm trying to think. I don't want to... I don't want to not be honest with you. I don't want you to run into any surprises. I I know what I did and I know it was wrong and and I got caught for it. And so here's here's what I want to add. Okay? And I want you to fly back with me. Um because you're going to have to come back and and talk to them. Am I specifically going back there to, you know, the jailed over there? Is there like a whole thing? Well, you're going to have to go see the judge right away. Right, and that's what I'll want you to do, and then it'll be up to the judge what will happen. Detective Kenimer then asks Pedgick about one particular disturbing piece of evidence. You did come to Michigan with a Plan B call. You still have that at your house? Right. In the backpack? Is that? It's no longer in the backpack. It is. Um... This man came with a Plan B pill. In the case that he climaxed in these little girls. What is this man did not do this once, twice, or three times? This man has been doing this. That's the only reason I could think that he would ever do any of this kind of stuff, man. A plan B pill? A plan B pill. For children. He's absolutely disgusting. And I'm so sick of seeing his fucking face. When he does this whole pretending to cry thing, it's like really making my blood boil because it's pissing me off um, because it's so fucking fake. That's, I'm sorry for cursing, but it is, make, it is so fake that he keeps doing this whole, uh, I can't believe I did this. And Yes, you did. You knew exactly what you're doing. Cut the bullshit, man. And this whole him trying to be like, I want to be honest with you and I'm just doing, no, he's not. He's not. The reason he's doing that to make himself seem remorseful. But if he flat out came out and said what really happened, why he did it, and how many people there were involved, God knows how many there were. They know he knows he's gonna get thrown under the jail. So he's trying to seem some remorseful. Even though he's probably um knowing he's in an interrogation, he's being filmed, and if this gets shown to court, he's trying to be like, See, my client, see, you could tell that this isn't him. He had a slip. No, he didn't. He did not have a slip in judgment. He planned all of this out to the fact that he planned getting all the way to Michigan, all the way to get to that midnight, all the way to the plan B pill, all the way to get to the hotel, all the way to get the camera set up and filmed and everything. That is not something you do on an off night. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just I really... I really genuinely hate myself. I've, all these fantasies were, were driven by my loneliness. You know, fantas fantasies are whatever. But I, I didn't get, I didn't have a girlfriend. I didn't have a girlfriend that I could see. I was just always lonely. And I gave into the All a fucking lie. He also provides the location of a loneliness Come on. device. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go off topic. The location of a gave into the he also provides the location of a secret digital device. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go off topic. I'm the worried for that. The plan B pill is in um, the, trop, the top drawer. It's a little plastic drawer from Ikea or something. Okay. That is to the left of my desk. Okay. That is also where you will find the other phone. That other phone, it is purple. It has my alternative Snapchat. 
which is how I use to meet. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of photos on that one. There's gonna be there's gonna be some photos and videos from that one. Yeah. As Detective Kenimer gets up to leave with all the evidence and information he needs to prosecute Peter Pedgick for his crimes against three children, Pedgick has one more question. So, like, how is this going to work, like, between now and when we... So, here, here's what's going to happen, okay? They're going to get you in front of a judge as soon as they possibly can. If you say you're going to fly back and, and talk to our judge, then they'll... It's called waiving extradition, and then hopefully they'll let you fly back with it. Do I get to call her soon? Yeah. I need to I need to tell people that I'm gonna be gone for a while. When he says that part right there, initially after I had some time to think about it, when he said I, I have to go call somebody, I was thinking, oh he's gonna tell his mom, his parents, his girlfriend, whatever. Well he said he didn't have a girlfriend. But he's gonna tell his closest friends. No. He knows he's going down. And I know this, he's not remorseful. My intuition tells me that when he says I have some people to call, he's about to call people in that network of he was talking about on Twitter. He's going to call these network of people. He's going to be like, hey, look, I'm going down. They're about to find all these photos and videos that I have on my phone. They're going to come for you next. Whatever you have, delete it, get rid of it, encode it. But they got me. So they're going to be looking in y'all's area now. Whatever you have, get rid of it now. Or shut down all the websites, shut down all the uh, X accounts, shut it all down, start up a new one because that phone is going to reveal all of it. That's what I think. I don't know that for sure, but I think that when he said he needed to go call some people, that's who he was calling to let them know it's the hammer's coming down. Get rid of all of it. While Pedrick waits behind bars to go before a Florida judge to be extradited to Michigan, the Hollywood, Florida Police Department SWAT team and officers descend on Pedrick's home to execute the search warrant. They find more cellular devices, a Plan B morning after box, and the clothes he was wearing during his time in Flint, Michigan. All now part of the evidence against him. While the capture and questioning of Pedgick went as smooth as can be, there was still one more issue the ghost detectives had to wait on. All right, this is our last day down in Florida. Um, our suspect has got to waive his rights right now. Um, so we're waiting. The court should probably uh, start in about 15 minutes. So it comes down to whether or not he says who he is and that we have that active warrant. If he waves it, then he flies back with us, and we have to get ready to transport a, a high-risk prisoner in the airplane, in the airport, get him back to Michigan so he can face justice for a victim. Absolutely. Okay, court just got done with. Uh, Mr. Pachek uh, waived his right to a hearing. Um, he's ready for us to pick him up. It's time for us to go to the airport. We're be flying back to Flint, Michigan, where he'll be transported to the Jensen County Jail and face uh, justice for sexually assaulting our 12 year old victim. As the plane's wheels touch down in Detroit, Genesee County Sheriff Chris Swanson is waiting to take his man into custody. What had happened is you have a 22 year old guy from West Palm Beach, Florida, that used Instagram to groom this little girl who was 12 years old. They groomed her and convinced her to wait for her and wait for him in a parking lot at midnight of a church. He flew from West Palm Beach to Detroit right here at Metro Airport, rented a car, drove to Flint and picked her up at midnight, took her to a local hotel in Mount Morris Township and sexually assaulted her. Right against the wall, face the wall. And left her that next day, went back to Florida. That's what started this investigation. Because of the great work of the ghost members, and we worked with West Palm Beach, Florida, Hollywood, Florida, Broward County Sheriff's Office, we were able to identify using our tools of investigation. At that point, our investigation showed that not only did he do it in Flint, Michigan, but he also, from then till now, flew to Washington State and assaulted a 16-year-old 
and then went from Washington to Oregon and assaulted a 14 year old. And the 12 year old was from Flint, Michigan, which is the reason why the ghost team is here. And this is why we're doing this. And I'm showing you, it doesn't matter where people are, it doesn't matter where they live, if they come into this county of Genesee and they assault, they sexually abuse, they traffic, they do whatever they need to do, whatever they want to do, thinking they're gonna get away with it, we're gonna come find you. And this is why we're here. So Padgett's gonna come right down from this door. My name is Sheriff Chris Swanson. You're in custody by the Genesee County Sheriff's Office. Do you understand that? I do. And you have a nine count felony warrant. That's from our jurisdiction. Do you understand that? I do. Where you're in custody, you're gonna be transported to the Genesee County Jail for further investigation and further custody. Do you understand that? I do understand. Do you have any medical concerns or any issues that are going on right now? Current medical none. Okay, we're gonna take you to this, this police car. We're gonna put you in uh, the back. We're gonna transport you to Flint, Michigan. Do you understand that? I do Let's go. This man doesn't even seem sad. He's just like, yep. He knows what's going down. He's like, but he doesn't care. He's just totally, yeah, I already know I'm going down for this. It's fine. I'm good with it. It's all good in my head. When the digital evidence found it okay okay so before we continue um this part once again if you have children in the room sorry i was like my camera's screwed if you have kids in the room please take them out <laughs> I, I hope you don't have kids in here also if you have teenagers in here please move them out of the room this part is worse than what i showed you earlier Find out about the Twitter, find out what he did to the little girl and the other kids. This part shocked the heck. I know I'm using that word a little bit too much, but I'm serious. Like, I can't think of any other word but being completely shocked when I heard it. You know, I'm just like, wow, are you serious? Like, are you serious with all this? It, it, and this is, and we're going to talk about this in depth. But go back to the part where he says this was a fantasy for me. It was all a fantasy. I never thought I'd do this. I never thought I'd actually fly down or fly up to Michigan to go do this with this girl. I never thought I'd do this. It was just a fantasy to me, but I gave in. Remember that when you see this part. Do not let that leave your head. Keep it all up in here. Wow, I just went all the way back. Sorry about that, guys. When the digital evidence found at Pedrick's home is brought back to Genesee County for further analysis, what the techs find is alarming and will further build the case against him. He also videotaped the interaction and was selling the footage. He turned it into a sexual assault porn industry. He had 2,700 videos on his phone. 2,700 2,700. And, and of those, how many were pornographic videos, potentially evidence of a crime? Pornographic, uh, the majority, but evidence of a crime, Captain Nelson, who is our forensic uh, downloader, uh, had uh, just under 79 videos of victims under the age of seven. Seventy nine videos. Twenty seven hundred videos, most of them pornographic. Seventy nine of those videos were of kids under the age of seven. Seven. That's talking that can be anywhere from zero to seven. So now I'm about to just prepare yourself. Okay, we're gonna get back to the video. But just uh, bear with me. This sick motherfucker said, I could never imagine myself doing this. It was a fantasy of an age regression group in Twitter. I didn't think she was actually 12. It was nothing to me. He was 
indulging in videos with kids under the age of seven. 79 videos. 79 videos. He either got these videos exchanged to him or he was also involved in these videos as well. Under the age of seven. So that bullshit about it was a fantasy about age regression and all that kind of stuff. That's all out the window. That's why I got pissed off earlier when I said when he keeps doing this, I, I, I feel so bad. I can't believe it. It was all a lie. He had 2,700 videos on his phone. This is the phone that he told them that he was going to have. And he said, oh, I have some videos on there, some photos. That brings me more to think that once again. This guy had 2,700 videos on there. 79 videos of kids under the age of 7. He didn't cry. He didn't seem remorseful. He knew he was going down. That means to tell me that he is part of a bigger sex trafficking ring kind of thing going on here. And he knows. He knew getting into this. He was probably going to go down. But he didn't care. His main goal was. You saw what he was living in. You saw him living in some rinky dink house. He was not just some random kid living his life and just got into it. I'm pretty sure he was part of this sex trafficking ring, this bigger plot going on. So when he got caught, they probably already told him, hey, you're probably going to go down or there's a chance you may get caught. Just be prepared for that. One slip up is going to come, you know, and that may have something to do with why he was at the bank to begin with. Right. Um, but my thing is, he not being remorseful and him not caring makes me think that he doesn't mind going to jail for this. He doesn't mind doing whatever sick, disgusting, evil work that he's doing with all these other people who are apparently involved in this. To have 2,700 videos of there, and probably a lot of them are, he said 79 were uh, the kids under the age of seven, telling me that the other videos were probably of kids over the age of seven, but still kids, still a lot of children in there. So this is part of some sick, disgusting trafficking ring, and this guy... This guy sat there and said, I didn't intend to hurt or make this little girl suffer when he's obviously doing stuff with children who are much younger than her. This guy didn't give a damn about this little girl. He didn't care what happened to this little girl. He didn't care what trauma she went through. He don't care about her psychologically. He don't care about her emotions. He damn sure don't care about her, what happened to her physically. He recorded all this stuff, got what he needed to get. And he's going to get money and other exchanges of other children going through the same shit that this little girl went through. And all these kids' lives are getting destroyed. And what it does is it creates a dis it creates such a a broken world that we obviously live in. You get these kids who grow up who have been assaulted by all these other men, including himself, who have had their lives destroyed and then they grow up and do the same thing to other people. Or they are just completely a fucking mess growing up. Or they take their lives. It's just... Sometimes I feel defeated. When I was talking about Ashton Kusher not too long ago after he wrote that letter to um, the judge for that guy who got uh, accused of assaulting a young girl when she was younger, uh, when he was younger. You know, I know some people are like, ah, he didn't really do it. I don't really care. My point was Ashton, who I really, re and I don't know him personally or anything, but I really looked up to him and to see that he had to step down. When I was, I've always been into the work he's done for sex trafficking victims and human trafficking. It just, and I know we're trying to do the best work we can out there, taking one man off the streets. But sometimes seeing that guy not even care at all about all the kids he's destroyed and not care about all the kids he's seen, obviously with 2,700 videos, to not even care at all to the point where he had plan bill peas. I mean, plan. Uh, plan B pills. It just sometimes makes you feel like, damn, there's just too much evil to conquer, man. Like it's so it's so easy to look around and be like, wow, flowers and you know, and uh, and I've got nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with looking around and going, wow, look at the beauty of life. Look at the mountains. Look at the flowers. Look at my beautiful kids growing up. But it, there's still a part of me that just can't sleep at night sometimes because it's just like. Sometimes I feel like my life is useless. I feel like it's so meaningless. Because every time I come on here and talk about porn, every time I come on here and talk about kids, every time I do this, there's just millions and millions of other cases going on. There's just this big ass 
uh, ring of kids just it's like it's so much it's overwhelming to even think about sometimes it's just like sometimes I feel bad because it's like in my head I'm like another kid and you want to feel just as sad as you did when the very first time you ever heard this stuff was going on when I was young it's like that first time you felt it you're like oh my god I can't believe this but then you hear it so much you just oh well you know another one I mean how many times can I pray how many times can I talk about it I'm just one man and you know I know there's other people out there like me doing the same thing really fighting the fight but at the same time I told myself you know there's not a whole lot that I live for outside of God obviously but I told myself I'd die on this hill now obviously I have hobbies and I do things I like but my whole life mission will always be part of the and everybody has different callings but mine will always be to fight for kids I've worked with kids for 20 years Got to look into a lot of kids' eyes. I've seen a lot of kids' lives ruined, abused. Like I'm never, like I said, I've never got descriptive. Cause I, not, I don't want to talk about that with children, so they leave that to the real experts. But you know, I've heard so many stories uh, from adults, and I've heard I've had kids come to me and tell me this boy did this to me. Um, but never graphic. I never allowed myself to get into it that way. I send them off to like a female teacher. But just to even hear that, um, it's just, just makes you want to give up. It's like, I'm tired of seeing my young men doing this kind of shit. And then obviously I see young men get this done to them. And it's just like, it feels hopeless. But, oh God, I hate when I get emotional. Okay, like I look up because I don't like looking right into the camera when I uh, get emotional. But because I can see, I see my cameraman and I see my face. I can see my face in front of myself too, and I hate seeing myself cry. Um, but I know God. Doesn't put this stuff in my heart or your heart if you're into this. To just give up. He loves all of us. So we gotta love with that same pain. We take our breaks when we can. That's why we need each other. When I can't handle it for a few weeks or months, somebody else can take over. Um, and the day, if the day ever comes where I can't take it at all, I don't know if that'll ever come, but there'll be other people who rise. So I don't, I'm not gonna lose hope. You gotta keep fighting. And let's finish this video. The videos he was making of these rapes of children, he was selling? Yes. Do we have any idea of the mechanics there? How much money he was making? How he was doing this? I don't know the answer to that. But it's not uncommon that many... I don't know the answer to that right now. But this is why we have federal uh, partners that can take that and see who on the back end. But again, you could have somebody from another country, you know, 10,000 miles away, you know, in Australia, and it, we're not gonna be able to charge that person. So this is a global economy when it comes to the underbelly of society. What we do know is it's not just money people want, they exchange images and uh, think of collectibles. That's what they see these at. So they will give you an image to get two images. And that's how child porn addicts and pedophiles and predators, that's their currency. Also found on Pedrick's cell phone were text messages between him and the 12 year old girl. Text messages that can account for his additional whereabouts while in Flint. In an alarming discovery, Pedrick allegedly followed the girl to a Walmart where she was shopping with her family. He texted her to meet him in the family bathroom where they would kiss, telling her he doesn't want to get caught. Thankfully, Pedrick did get caught. It is in the custody of the Genesee County Sheriff's Office where he can't hurt another child. Child predators who stalk and groom underage children are an epidemic 
not only here in the U.S., but around the globe. Sheriff Swanson and the ghost team want to put them behind bars, obviously. But another priority is to educate parents and society in general. What's the lesson of this case? I mean, it's, it's horrifying. I think to a lot of parents that a child could be targeted on Instagram. This isn't necessarily a dating site. This isn't necessarily, you know, an explicit area of conversation. This is where yeah. kids are talking to other kids. What's the lesson of this case? So go back to you know 30 years ago when people were always telling their kids, "Don't talk to strangers because they're right there." You know. They have the, the vans with no windows and they're offering candy and that happens. But the internet has transitioned into those same vans with no windows and people are right there with you by the, the millions and they are seeking and roaming and they have different doors that they open to get in. And I think the lesson is that it's real. People don't like to hear about 12 year olds getting raped. So they don't talk about it. That's why I'm so committed to being on your platform is, is you have a voice to the to the world. And if your interview with me can get somebody to talk about it, and it could be happening right now, and it stops, like we just saved a kid that we won't even know. I reached out to Pedrick's attorney for comment and requested an interview with Peter himself. I did not receive a response. Peter Pedrick is being held on a $180,000 bond. He's facing 12 felonies in Genesee County, as well as federal charges, including first-degree sexual conduct, aggravated child sexually abusive activity, using a computer to commit a crime, distribution of sexually explicit material to children, and aggravated possession of child sexually abusive material. Pedrick has pleaded not guilty to all the charges, and his next court appearance is July 7th. So, let's do a little bit of a debrief here. So first, let's start with, he said he pleaded not guilty. We heard what he said in the interrogation room, and he said he's not guilty. He literally admitted to it. He has 2,700 photos, videos, <clears throat> all this stuff, unless they throw, unless the jury and everybody throws all of that out and says all of that's inadmissible. That's crazy. That'd be crazy to me. Uh, but let's go back to what the man says. I mean, this is where I think some people have such a big argument, man. And I think, once again, you're the parents. You make whatever decision you're going to make. But just know that there's consequences to every decision. There's so many little girls. There's so many little boys that have social media, right? And the argument has been these days is, oh, we got to let them have it. You got to let them be free. You got to let them take pictures. You got to let them do this. But how do these men and women get to these young people these days through social media, through Instagram, through Twitter, through Snapchat? That's where they get them. And they're getting them. It's not like it's not like when social media came out, it got better. You know, it's not like when social media came out, it's like, oh, now less people are getting taken off the streets. No, these, I hate saying something like this, but it's just true. These men and women, they're smart. They're intellectuals. They know exactly what to say to a child, exactly what to look for, exactly what to go for to get these kids to comply and groom and get them where they need to be. Guys, if it didn't work, pornography would have been gone a long time ago. If this shit didn't work, sex trafficking, human trafficking wouldn't be a problem. But people just want to ignore it. Like that man said, nobody wants to hear about a 12-year-old getting taken advantage. They want to think it's not going to happen to my baby. It's not going to happen to my kid. Oh, yes, it will. And then the other thing is people don't want to be that pessimistic. People don't want to be that strict. They don't want to believe that evil's out there like that because they feel like if they think that way, um, it's bound to happen. Or if they think if they think that way, they'll, they'll make themselves crazy. I completely understand that, man. I look at these videos all the time. Not one to this degree that's this wild. Now that I know about this, um, I obviously know I have to be more vigilant. But I see a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff of the most disgusting thing men could ever talk about. And I can tell you this, man. 
I think it'd just be better to err on the side of caution. Like, is it going to destroy your kid not to be on social media? You didn't do it. If you're a parent at this age, more than likely you grew up around the age where social media wasn't as big as it is now. Did you die? You know, and I, I hate to say it that morbidly, but did you die, man? Did was your life? Did your life suck, or any of that kind of stuff? Not saying that all these situations will make everything absolutely safe. But you, I'm telling you, I think your chances are just better if your child's not on social media where they can do this. Because the chances of a child, even if a guy or a woman comes along and says this kind of stuff to them, a lot of these kids get, get manipulated. As much as we love to say, I taught my kid better than that, you can't teach them everything that's going to happen. I apologize. I want to say this again. These individuals who do this, they're intelligent. They already know what parents, they talk to thousands and thousands and thousands. And if you put this on a, a global scale, it's going to be millions, millions of children that are getting talked to every day. They're going to hear what these kids say back to them. And they're going to gather da data on this. They're going to hear kids say, well, my mom said I couldn't do this data point. They'll be like, okay, they, they're going to train these men and women to know exactly how to respond. But like, okay, I understand your mom said that. But, you know, we can just meet up for one time and hang out, right? It's just all it takes. These kids can be so easily manipulated because these are smart adults who are getting to them, who are knowing exactly what to say. And they're just gathering more data. It's the same thing we see. And this is obviously not in a direct correlation or any like the best analogy, I guess, would be. But it's the same thing with scammers. Okay, all of us know about scammers, but tons of people, millions of people still get scammed all the time. I made a story the other day. I didn't make a story. I, I talked about a story the other day talking about sextortion and these young men who keep taking their lives because they get scammed into thinking they're talking to a tease and a girl and they're just talking to a grown man in another country. They are so smart in other countries. They know exactly what to say, exactly what to do. People hack people all the time. People get people's money all the time. Heck, just if we just want to take it to a smaller scale. YouTubers watch other YouTubers to get scammed all the time on how to just get views. It's, it's that, and I know that sounds stupid and silly, but just come on. YouTubers scam other YouTubers all the time. Okay? you. Uh, so to think that your kid won't get scammed, I mean, sorry, that your kid won't get manipulated and your kid won't get fooled into doing something that's going to destroy their lives or even worse, have their life taken because we know about kids who go missing and kids that obviously get their lives taken by men like this guy too as well as soon as they, because one thing that can also happen and here's something that we've seen in other places, some people will threaten these kids. They won't just be like, oh, please don't tell or are you sure you won't tell? No, they'll tell the kid, if you say anything, I'll take your life. And they end up taking the kid's life anyway, right? But if you make a kid, a, a child, so scared for their life, they'll do it, right? Or if you make a kid feel like there's something in it for them, you make it beneficial to them, they'll do it. So all I'm trying to say, guys, is I understand the, man, I hate saying it because sometimes it sounds stupid to me, but sometimes I get it. But this whole concept of you just want your kid to be free and you want your kid to be them and all that kind of stuff, you are the parent. I would rather you try your best. I would rather you be somewhat strict with them, if not strict, when it comes to social media. And like, no, you're just not going to get on that. No, you're just not going to talk to those people. No, I, it doesn't matter. It's not about them. It, it's about them, but it's not about saving their feelings or making them try to feel cool at school or making them feel like they're more a part of because they're not going to be a part of a goddamn thing if they're, they're not going to be part of anything. Anything. If they get taken off the streets, if they get taken advantage of, or like I said, even worse, they get sold. We, we hear about those stories all the time. They get kidnapped and sold, and you never hear from those kids again. Would you rather that? I'm sorry I'm having to be so harsh, but would you rather that? Or would you rather them be like, Mom, my mom won't let me get on Instagram. She's not cool. My mom isn't like that. She said I can't get on it. Would you rather that, or you want to seem cool for some fucking kids? And I, I, I know parents like that who do stuff for their kids because they just want to seem cool or they do stuff for their kids because they just want to uh, they, they want their kids to be cool or they do stuff because they don't want their kids to like hate them. You know, you're saving their fucking life. This is not a damn game. And that's, that's what's so frustrating is people really treat this like it's a game until it happens to their kid. Then it's no longer a game. It's no longer funny. 
You can keep them off social media. Now, what they decide to do in their adulthood when they're no longer in your home, that's them. That's that's on them. But if you can protect them every second of their life while they're still a child, why not do that? I don't understand. Why not do that? Why not do that? Who cares if they have a social media and they can take some silly pics? Because it's only going to take one person to get them to think just one way, especially these kids who are troubled. We know kids who are troubled. Those are normally the easier targets. So you just just do your best, parents, please. Keep your kids off of social media. It, I just feel like it's way more worth them not being on social media than whatever psychologically can help. I don't know what what is what is a big what is a bigger benefit to them being on social media versus them not being on social media. Them not being on social media is going to save them from the, these predators. All of these predators, all of these scams, all this stuff that can happen to them, all the negativity, all the evil comments they're going to get. There's so much they can they can benefit that they can't handle as a child or get manipulated into as a child versus whatever the hell the benefits are, which I don't know a ton of benefits to a kid being on social media. I don't know the benefit that's so great that they would be so much more successful in life versus if they just never got on until they were older. Okay, us adults are on social media. I don't see how social media can be beneficial to us because there's money to be made. I can see that part and it does keep you somewhat up with the news. But I'm going to tell you right now, I don't feel like my life is way more beneficial now um, than it, when I did not have social media. Like as a kid, I don't see how social media be helping me at all. It, w- it would have done nothing for me as a child. And like I said, even as an adult, <laughs> you see what it does to our society. People have to take breaks from social media. Well, like I said, guys, this is going to be a tough one. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I really don't have much more to add. Protect your kids. Please protect your kids. And don't let them be another victim. Anyway. Goodbye.